Gig Gab, the Working Musicians Podcast, episode number 137 for Monday, October 23rd, 2017. <music> Greetings, folks. And welcome to Gig Gab. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Los Gatos, California, it's Paul Kent. How are you today, man? I'm good, man. There's so much going on. I did my petty show last week. It went awesome. So awesome that we did, there was enough demand. We're going to book a second one. And it was a... It was great to play the music. I mean, it was, it was actually awesome, awesome, because I love that music so much. Yep. It was fun to play with a couple new people. It was, um, it was a really good experience. I'm actually... You know, I don't want to go into it too far today, but... Um, uh, we're gonna, probably going to end up doing three, four, five gigs just out of this because other people wanted it done. Other venues heard about it. Yeah, sure. But I think what I'm going to do is uh, make this a yearly thing because there clearly is a lot of demand for it. People love Tom Petty. I don't know who else you could do this for actually thinking about it. You know, everything else would be more niche right? Like if you would have done Bowie, would you have sold 200, 300, 400 tickets? I don't know. Right? Oh, but yeah, Petty, that's Petty a good, has that's a wide question. appeal. Yeah. yeah. And people immediately like it was one of those things when I made a Facebook event for it immediately started getting shared. And, you know, there was just a lot of interest. So, you know, that's one indication. So I think what I want to do is that's, you're right, though. Petty versus like Bowie. But I would say Bowie fans are probably a little more diehard. And, and I'm I'm overgeneralizing here. Of course, there's some diehard Petty fans. But but in general, when you find somebody that's into Bowie, they're like deep into Bowie. Right. And whereas yeah. Petty, you're right, has has a, a more uh, I don't want to say universal appeal, but but it, it's easier to sort of wade your toes into the the waters of Tom Petty's music and and enjoy it and understand it. Whereas whereas Bowie, you know, it's it, it's, it, it if you're going to go listen to an evening of Bowie music. That's a taste you need to acquire ahead of time. That's my point. I and mean, even even Glenn Fry, right? I mean, the Eagles are still performing, so you actually can go out and see that music, right? And uh, right. so you know, to do that same type of vibe, you know, you might be able to yeah, get but one. I, but I think you can I, actually, based on what I see um, around here and even elsewhere around the world, the Eagles' music is absolutely like this petty thing. You could sell uh, out nights. Of make, that. It makes sense. Yeah. You know, people yeah. it wide appeal. Yeah. You know, men, women, all ages, that type of thing. Yep, totally. So. Totally. My business idea here is there's so much good interest in it and it's so fun to play that we'll do like a once a year thing on his birthday. And, you know, that's it, smart because that way you're not going to overdo it. You're not going right. to oversaturate. Yep. Right. So there's some interest in it right here, right now. So we'll do of those course. three, four, five shows, but then be able to turn into one kind of good four walled thing um, uh, on his birthday every year. So I only need, you know a hundred more of those kind of ideas and I can be a professional musician. Well, I was just going to say that's the, that the, he, there's the, the twist into a, a business model, right. Is finding those things. So maybe, you know, you do a petty show, like you said, now you can, you, you can sort of get away with doing several of them, but, e but even then you got to be careful that you don't, you know, burn it out at least on, on one geographic area. And then, you know, and then you do an Eagle show and then you do right. And you you do one of these a month and you make it an annual thing every month. Now you've got like a little deal going. Um, you do. I wonder, you know, in the integration of all things. So remember, I do solo gigs. I have my. No, 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 I'm, not, I, yeah, I'm not saying you that, that that you should, you know, stop everything else and do this. But that's no, 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 no. What I'm saying is. I would be overexposed if mm -hmm. I had one of these a month, right? Right. You in in order to do this, you would have to stop doing everything else and have that be the only thing that you did. Ah, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So so then then you could justify it from a finance model that if you were if you were the tribute guy or you know or you were the because I did this as a Paul Kent and Friends gig. So yep. there were two of my buddies from the House Rockers that played Nick and Simon played, but then two other guys who had said, "Hey, you know, I'd love to play with you sometime." That I know are and are friends. And I, and I thought that this would be a good way to do it. And um, uh, that was kind of cool and interesting to play with a couple of new people for the first time. Sure. Um, uh, yes, business model. So that's what you're saying. So so there could be a business model if you know enough musicians and you can kind of mix and match so it's fresh and different every time. Yep. I don't think I could say, you know, like if the House Rockers business model was 
one a month tribute shows, you know, that we're going to sell tickets for and, you know, try and get six, eight, 10 grand, you know, per show. Um, I don't think, I think the house rockers would have limited shelf life for this. So I, it would right. be a hard, it would be a hard thing. No, I think, the, I think the Paul and friends thing works because then you get the right lineup for whatever it is you're going to cover. Right. So yeah. you're going to do a Beatles night. OK, that that might be different people than than you would for like a Tom Petty night, perhaps. I, I mean, yeah. maybe, maybe it wouldn't. But but that way, mixing it up, you could, you know, it it keeps it fresh for the crowd. And then people kind of get to know you as, hey, here's that guy that's going to come and and, you know, deliver exactly what it takes to do that. I wonder if you could do a McCartney night. I mean, I, and that's it's really actually a more interesting question than it seems like on the surface, because oh, there have been man. so many. Well, a there's been so many Beatles tribute thingies around for a long time. Would you be able to build it around everything he did after the Beatles? Would that be of much interest to people? I don't well, know. Well, see, so here's here's the the trick with that, though. If you do a McCartney McCartney only night, you've that's a vocally that's a huge challenge, right? Yeah. Because you need essentially one person that can sing McCartney stuff all night long. Whereas, or maybe multiple people, but but you're singing McCartney all night long and it's exposed. Whereas if you're doing Beatles stuff, you know, a lot of the McCartney stuff is buried in the harmonies. So you can hit the note without actually having to sing well. <laughs> well, seriously, right? I mean, that you know, there's a there's a big difference between singing a harmony and singing a lead. Um, so that would be the only thing. But I think there's room for a Beatles thing, especially if it's, you know, here's Paul Kent and Friends delivering what oh well we know it's it's going to be good like you, you know so oh beatles hey that would be great i'd love to see though you know the, whatever paul brings to to do beatles stuff well and that's let, the me, thing let is, me know when you're going to do paul kent and friends do mahavishnu orchestra because i want to come and see that well you know, it's funny because nick said because <laughs> nick actually had, well that's exactly nick had basically two days to uh to learn the whole show and and uh, he did a great great job sure and he goes, dude, I will get back at you for this. You know, when I do my Zappa night, you're going to have to learn that in two days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So so the, back to the business models thing. So if you're that guy in your scene who knows enough local musicians yep. uh, and knows the ones that would, you know, put in the time and, you know, do a good job at this. That's actually kind of an interesting thing. Right. So, you know, again, Petty and his untimely demise is a particularly timely thing. So the first one I did at a place where I had an acoustic gig booked holds about 200 people and it sold out. It, well, it, it, there's no technical sellout, but tables got reserved for their, this place. Sure. So my deal was with the venue, not not a ticket based thing. Um, so, you know, the tables got totally taken and we had to shut it down. And because of the that's demand, a, that's a good thing. thing. Yeah, well, you it was a good them, thing. You got to leave them wanting more. Yeah. Yeah. So then I, I called, you know, my local club and, and I said, hey, you know, I've got plenty of demand here. Can I do it and sell tickets? He goes, yep. So I took it on a Sunday night. Um, I already put, you know, I made a Facebook event, event bright to sell tickets in advance yep. and the tickets are, you know, they're about a third gone already after just two days. So it's all kind of happening fast. So again, you know, good, timing, man. yeah. Timing, you know, and popularity and, you know, a, a widespread appeal and those types of things. So I think the stars are kind of lined up. I don't know if you could actually be, the Paul Kent and friends once a month, you know, what are they going to do? January's McCartney, February's Mellencamp, you know, I, uh, maybe. I think you yeah. could, I, but again, yeah. you'd have to not go He's out a lot of and, and well, right. And you'd have to not go out and play those songs on off weeks. Right. I mean, like, cause otherwise, although you could do like, you, you know, you do three or four months of, of whatever, you know, Petty, Springsteen, uh, Mellencamp, Beatles, whatever. And then, you know, month number five is all right. It's Paul Kent and friends playing, you know, a mishmash of, of yeah. everything or whatever. I, you know, I think that's pretty interesting good. model. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 play yeah. With. yeah. So I did want to share with you something I posted, you know, I have a, I have a House Rockers Facebook page. Right. I have my personal one. And then I have PK Music, which is kind of it was it was created mostly to just talk about my acoustic, you know, shows, but it 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 gets to be more of a you know total calendar of anywhere if someone wants to see me play. Sure. And um there's not that many people, and like three hundred people have liked it. You know, the um events that are created there get, you know, some traction, although this petty thing has gotten quite a bit of traction. But I am trying to not be a little smarter about social media and not use my personal page as all advertising and my music things and try and get people over to the music. But, you know, sure. 
I, there's other things on my mind, you know, yeah. sports, you know, family, politics, everything. So that I'm trying to funnel that into my personal page. Just, just be aware that if um, it, your PK music page and, and this is just sort of a, a general advice for everybody, the way Facebook's algorithms work, most people won't see most posts from right. most of the pages that they follow. You'll right. see more from individuals. So my, my guess is what you do is post this to your PK music page and then personally share yeah. it. And, yeah. and that's how you get that exposure happening. So but just I'm also, to make sure everybody knew. Yeah. But I, and again, I don't know, like. I use Facebook. I go look at things. So if there's a band I like, I'll go look at their Facebook page and look at their calendar. So I will actually go to it instead of waiting for it to be pushed into my sure into my feed. But, you know, I'm trying to train people. If they want to find me, they can go to this page. That's a good, Just yeah, like they smart. would go to a website, right? Yeah, that's smart. Yeah. All right. So anyway, it you know, any post I have, again, 300 followers. If, if there's 10 responses to it, that's a lot, right? Yeah. So I had an issue with a venue. Uh, and I'll tell you about this issue. And I posted something on this PK music page and it's got like 50 or 60 responses to it. So five, six, 10 times the best of anything that had ever been sure. in the past, which was kind of an interesting thing. So, so people here, like controversy, what, man. Oh, you think that's what it is? Well, maybe yeah, tell us, tell us about this so that the All listeners right. know, cause I read the post, so I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm jumping the gun. Yeah. So it's a venue that I went to play. They originally booked me for seven dates and then they, within a couple of weeks, decided to change their strategy and just canceled five of those seven. Had you uh, already the, done two of them? So were they canceling all future nope. gigs? Okay. No, I, I, the, um, let me see. So it's a winery yep. and they've opened up a new tasting room in another town and they're trying to, trying to um, get traffic to this new tasting room. So I played one gig for them over the summer. Um, two gigs for them over the summer at the winery. Okay. But now they, now they've opened up this other facility. And, um, um, so, you know, they booked me for seven, then about a week, seven, 10 days later, they changed their mind and said, Hey, we only want you to do these two. I'm like, All right. Um, I went and did the, the gig there. Um, I filled it with my friends, family, and fans, you know, not huge, but you know, no, but 30, you, bring, people. you bring the people I, you bring. Yep. Everyone who was in there was because of me. Got right? it. Okay. So percentage wise, the, the, the crowd was yours. Right. Um, I pack up, go to get paid. And the person there says, Oh, we don't pay after the gig. Um, we'll have to send it to you. I was like, what? And, uh, I went back, but I was still pretty okay about things. Um, I went back, sent a note to the person who booked me saying, Hey, it went pretty good. I brought a pretty good crowd. Um, the check wasn't there. So we can make that happen. And, um, you do want to talk about rebooks. And a couple of days later, I got an, a response that, uh, uh, yep, we'll get on at our accounting department. You know, sorry, we weren't clear about that. Our accounting department will cut the check and, uh, yeah, you know, send me your dates, sent dates, hear nothing, sent a follow up a couple of days later. Hey, making sure you saw this, Nothing. Uh, check doesn't come for a week and I get back involved. And now another person responds and says, yeah, well, our accounting team is, is working on this. Um, it'll be here soon. And I'm, you know, we'll take a look at your dates. Still nothing on the dates. Huh. Um, uh, the check finally comes about three and a half weeks after the gig and is short. Oh, and I sent them a note saying, um, uh, it, it's short. And, uh, they said, well, it's not short. Um, a two hour gig, it pays this and a three hour gig pays this. And all I had was them was the original offer for the seven dates that said, we pay this. Right. 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 When they changed it to, we only want you to play two. They changed it to from three hours to two hours. They changed it from a mid afternoon to an early evening thing, but they didn't say they were changing the pay. Yeah. So I brought it up to him and I said, and I said, listen, so when she goes, no, this is what you're going to get paid. I sent her a note saying, listen, first you book seven gigs and cancel five. Then you don't respond to any of my emails. Then, you know, I, I ask to get paid at the end of a gig and you don't tell me. Then it takes three and a half weeks to get paid. And then it's short. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cancel my, my other gig that I have with you. And she spends back a note. And I, again, I don't know this person, but they, they need to have the last word. And they're like, we're sorry you feel like you need to be paid for three hours when you only played two hours. Like oh, snarky, right? Yeah. Despite So anyway, that is actually why I ended up posting it is because they decided to, you know, take that tone. And I asked another friend of mine who played up there and they go, yep, we played there once. We won't play there again. You know, they fooled around with money. Yep. 
and then I post it. So in, so in your post, just so people that are listening are aware, you you actually named the club in your post. I did. Okay. I did. And and I and actually not only that, I was quite verbose about why I was naming the club. Right. 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 So I said basically, you know, when a a, a place shows themselves to be musician hostile, sometimes as a musician, the only recourse you have is to call them out. And I, you know, shared what happened. And then I said, you know, I'm not going to play this place anymore. I encourage my musician friends not to play this place. And I encourage my music fans to not patronize this place. Uh, this is the only way you can get someone's attention, you know, that they can't be musician hostile like that. And like I said, I got about 60 responses to it, a decent thread of comments. A couple other musicians weighed in and said, me too. This happened at that venue. Yep. Um, and a lot of fans said, that's not cool. Right. And um, again, I have a whole bunch of thoughts about this, you know, uh, they haven't contacted me and said, you know, anything about it. I don't know if they've even read it. I don't, I get the sense they don't have their act together in many ways. And that, that's why the snarkiness comes out. Sure. Um, sure. but it, it was an interesting thing. So I fired a client happily. I fully aware, am aware that I have the luxury of doing that. And someone who really needs the gig might put up with all that stuff. Well, right? yeah, okay. That's one aspect of it. I'd I'd like to go into the aspect of the post itself, though, if if you if I may. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So so. Well, before you go, go yeah. Would would you have made that post? Well, that's where I was. Okay, so you're you're leading me to the question I was going to answer anyway. <laughs> um, here's the thing, right? Whenever you head down the path of sharing dirty laundry publicly, right, which is essentially what this is. The, there's there's a risk, right? Because you're you're going to spend some of your social capital, right, on exposing whatever it is that that you want to expose, and it's possible. And and perhaps in in your scenario here, you sort of made that back by people replying and saying, "Hey, this club did that to me too." So it legitimizes what you said, right? Yep. And and that sort of thing. But there is that risk of exposing this and having like. Our fans don't necessarily some of them care about the behind the scenes. And and those are the people that sort of surprised us in wanting to listen to this show. Right. Because this is total, you know, inside baseball for musicians, for the most part, what we do on this show. And yet there's a lot of people that listen that have never played an instrument that are just fans and and are interested in that. But not everybody is. Right. So. There, there's a risk that somebody will say, you know, I like going to see this guy play. He's always so happy when I see him play. And, you know, I always feel good. And now, you know, and maybe it doesn't happen instantly in their minds, but now they go to a club and they see you and they're like, gosh, I wonder what's going on. And that might taint the whole kind of uh, yeah. flavor of it. Right. So so there's a risk. At, and 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 you took it right. And you took it. Then there's a second layer of risk by exposing the, the name of the, the club, because now if I'm somebody who runs a club, you know, I run a business. I know that sometimes stuff happens. Right. And and not everybody has a good experience. So how how short of a, a fuse does this guy have? And, and you're and, you know, again, th this is a just a decision that people that are going to book you in the future need to make like, do I want to risk if something goes sideways and even if it's not my fault, like how much leeway do I have with this guy before he starts bad mouthing me? And it looks like people listen to him. I don't know. Like maybe I don't want to book that guy. That's a possible. Right. I'm not saying that that's happened, yeah. but, but like, those are the things you need to factor in. And I, 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 I don't know, maybe three, it was about three months ago. Uh, similar thing. But but different world in our Mac Geek Gab Facebook group, I posted uh, and asked if we had a sponsor that wasn't paying, would you want to know their name? And, you know, how would you want me to deal with that? And uh, and I did not expose the sponsor's name and, and I made it clear. I said, look, it's not anybody. You know, I, yes, I have someone in mind. It's a sponsor that hasn't been with us for a couple of years. They're a year behind on paying things. We obviously aren't still promoting them. Um, it's no one current. You know, don't start trying to do the math. You're not going to figure it out. Right. But so let's just talk about this in the abstract. But let's deal with that. And we had a huge similar to yours. Huge, huge Facebook thread about it. And I sent the thread to the sponsor. And two weeks later, I got a check. 
um, because they didn't want this kind of thing, you know, uh, going on about them. And, and I did not associate their name with it. So and, and actually, the only reason I, I sent the thread to the to the sponsor was because several people in the thread said, you know, this is a really good thread here. If I were the person that, you know, was having trouble with my business and couldn't pay you back then, I might want to know about this now. I was like, yeah, sure. I got nothing to lose. So I did that um, and I got paid. Yep. So so there you go. There's there's right. kind of my reaction. So would I do this? I, I don't know. I wasn't in your shoes, but but put in similar shoes. I handled it that way. OK, so um, the risk was calculated. Right. And what I mean by that is I'm also a very enthusiastic supporter of the good venues that support live music. Right. I'm not shy about that. And um, the things that went through my head are I have a brand or a reputation, whatever you want to call it. And I think uh, that reputation that over the amount of time that I've been doing this um, has some value. Oh, totally. And, and that's what I mean about your social capital, right? Like that's you, it. That's it. Yep. Right. Yep. And so, um, uh, I think, and then the other part of this, quite frankly, is, you know, I get on this show with you every week and I talk about walking the walk. Yes. Not just talking the talk. Yep. And, um, I did actually, it was in my mind that it was like, you know, what would I be? if I was to just kind of let this go, what would I, you know, what is, what is the right way to stand up and, you know, present a model of what I think is valuable. And again, that's why I started by saying, I totally get it. If someone needed a gig and they were willing to put up with that stuff, knowing what they know, yep, they could do it. I wouldn't boycott, you know, I wouldn't bad mouth a musician who takes a gig there. Right. Um, I hope what I said would make a good musician think twice about bringing his crowd to this place. So that's the type of thing. So, so the first, my first response is this was a calculated uh, risk set off. Um, what, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have done anything until the last email where they kind of challenged my integrity. Um, and then I was like, okay, this is not cool. And then when I found out other musician friends, like before I posted one other musician friend said, Oh yeah, absolutely. Yep. And then I'm like, who am I? You know, I'm supposed to be, you know, in all humility, some kind of a leader in my musical community. Mm -hmm. I put on shows, I advocate for live music. I run a live music series. I mean, I do a lot of things that are, you know, supposed to be a model. I asked myself, what would I be? Am I, am I, is it just lip service if I meekly let a situation like this kind of pass under the radar or, you know, is this a good way to, you know, let the music consuming audience in my area know that musicians are important and they need to be treated with respect. Uh, and if not, you know, it needs to be, it needs to be discussed. Um, you know, th and again, this gets deeper. This is it like, does. yeah, well, well get, the reason I say it gets deeper is this goes back to the amount of time, energy, and effort you put into to make basically 25, 30, 40 bucks an hour on a gig, right? Yeah, it's true. So, you know, and th this is why, you know, and, and it's something I've learned over time. I would not, you know, I've had the good fortune to be mentored, you know, Mary Ellen in my community and her husband, Tom, these are really seasoned musicians and they're very careful uh, and very uh, savvy in the interrelationship of all things. That point that you bring up is you know, one that I would probably think about, you know, the, the you know, the, does another club think about this before, but, you know, I, I hang out with, you know, musicians who are like the, the best of the best around here. I would want them to think of me as someone who stands up for something that's right. Um, and, and this is one case where, you know, my line got crossed and it got crossed, yeah. it got crossed four times and then a fifth time with a little bit of indignancy thrown on top. And so it's like, you know, right. What do you do if you, if you want to be that guy who, who walks the walk instead of just talking the talk? And that's really where my head was about this is like, all right, I could, any one of those four things, you just chalk it up to someone being, sure. you know, not good at their job and not worth a public calling out. But when it was four of them, and then the fifth one is to kind of like try and turn it around on, you know, on my ethics, that that went into that thing where I and that's how I closed my message on Facebook. I said, listen, I work really hard at my craft. I practice a lot. I work hard at promoting my gigs. I spend a lot of time trying to get this right. The least the the the, the basic fundamental thing, at least at my stage of my local performing career is to, you know, is to draw a line and say this is not cool. 
Yeah. No, I don't. I, 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 I think where you, but, but I, I don't think you're going to have a problem with this, but just in a general sense where we all need to be careful with that is the percentage of our public exposure, right? How much of it is you complaining about venues? I mean, if you were doing, if this, this was, as far as I can tell, this is the first time you've ever done this, right? Yep. And, and so that in the sea of everything else that you do percentage wise, it's like, wow, somebody must have really wronged this dude for this to happen. And and now I know who the somebody is, right? <laughs> like, you, you know, okay, great. But if it was every week, you, you know, mon every Monday you were no. like, man, well, I'm not saying you are, but, yeah. but if someone did I'm that. I'm not on a crusade. I'm not on correct. a crusade to write every bad business or, or anything like that. You know, and that, you that's what you need to be, you know, we all need to be careful of is what, how are we perceived on the other side of all of this stuff that we do? You know, is it, wow, you know, he asked me to come out to all these gigs and then he complains about every single one of them. Like that's, there's a lot of people that would just, that would turn them off, right? There's probably some people that would yep. turn them on because they like to whine or whatever. But, um, but that's not, that's not what you did here. And I, again, I just, I want to paint this picture. Okay. For our listeners that, that might not have seen all of this so that they, they kind of get that this is, this is a departure from who you normally are as a public persona, or at least, you know, your Facebook persona or whatever that right. is. And, and that's what we need to all sort of be aware of is how do we come across in the long term? Uh, because you do, you know, you are a member of your community when you're out there playing gigs and For sure. you're a, you're a public member of your community. Like people know who you are, or at least that's the goal. You got to be careful because you get, you know, you get pigeonholed as one thing and, um, and it, it, you know, it's hard to turn that around. If someone was to come ask me what they should do, if they had this situation happen to them, yeah, I would, I, my first question would be, do you need the gig? Right. So the, the musician's well-being, I'm not here to cancel someone's ethics. These are my ethics. Right. I'm not putting totally. them on anybody else. Right. And, yes. And, and that that I actually is is sort of the next thing I was going to bring up was the fact that you posted this about you and it bothered you. But you never once. I mean, and it's I, I think you probably took great care in making sure that it didn't come across this way because it didn't come across this way. You never once chided anyone, you know, that would want to take a gig with this place. It, it like this was, hey, I had this problem. Here's here's what I want you to know. And you do you. It's all good. Well, so yeah. let me let, let me try this on you. If you were to just read this. Yeah. Um. And read the thread. Yep. All right. So remember, I made a I made a moderately long statement and then a bunch of people added into it. Right. If you were the venue, were you like, we should get our act together? If it accomplishes that, then I did a then I did a good thing. If you're another venue that's like, you know, these musicians are serious, they want to be treated with respect. You know, before I have live music, I'm gonna, you know, think twice about whether, you know, what that means. Would it accomplish that? Then I've done a good thing, right? Yeah. If all it comes across as me barking at the moon then it was, it's a waste of space. I, I agree with all of those things. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think you wasted space. I, I think you did. I think you did a good thing. Uh, Again, yeah. I, you know, a musician trying to build a following, trying to get a clientele together. You know, I would like to think at the very least that the venue will now inform people with their payment policy as in well, they don't have to it. anybody that read your post knows to ask. Yeah. Right. And, and that's the, like, and that's a huge thing as you, you know, as you were kind of talking through this, I started making some notes and one of them was ask for payment structure before the gig, yeah. not, not only how much you're going to get paid, but when, and often what I'll ask is, and will the bar be able to cash me out at the end of the night? Or should I expect to bring cash so I can pay the other band members if all I'm going to get from you is a check? Yeah. And, because and reality a, is, I mean, I know a lot of people say you should have a contract for everything, but in reality, you don't have a contract for everything. No. It's a contract. No, it's a verbal contract, but that doesn't mean you don't have details. Right. And, and this is where you can get those, those sorts of details is just making sure you're clear on how things are going to go. And, and there's nothing it, as odd as it might feel to ask, when do you pay me? How do you pay me? Like those aren't weird questions for someone who's running a business to answer. Right. It, it may feel odd, like, oh, crap, I'm really lucky. I got this gig. You know, I don't want to I don't want to ruin anything. So I'm not going to ask him about that. Like, well, oh, OK, but that's 100 percent in your head. 
Like if you go to somebody and say, hey, great, I know I'm coming. Uh, you know, you're going to pay me 200 bucks. That's great. Uh, just as out of curiosity, are you paying that in cash or are you writing me a check? Like there's nothing weird about that. That's, that's like a normal question. It's business. It's just business. And the person on the other end will not hear it as you being weird. They'll hear it as you being smart. Like, oh, I'm so glad they asked. There's now we don't have that bit of confusion to deal with. Great. Right. Yeah. Well, and this is even weirder because I've never had I've never had that happen before. Right. 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 I mean, payment is always at the conclusion. And so the, the person who says, oh, yeah, we'll send you a check in a couple of weeks. That's weird. Right. Yep. So the, the, the assumption of assumption thinking on their part that that's a reasonable business standard. That's again, is that a sin of omission or commission or are they are they, you know, why does it happen that way? You know, is an interesting question. There yeah. are there are there are business norms, right? Industry norms. Sure. Yeah. 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 And and I would say, you know, if they want to have if they want to have music, they should understand the industry norms Yeah, or, and at least possible. point it out if it's not. I was just going to say, that's right. Point it out if it's not. That's right. Or be open to understand. I mean, it, you know, like you said, this place is a winery. Uh, there's a lot of wineries out there that do gigs, but maybe this is new for them. Right. And so, you know, they assume they know how to do it. And then, whoa, oh, this didn't work. It's a OK. I'm sorry. You and, know, but that's it. it you, I would I would have gladly given the benefit of the doubt. But like course. I said, add, add up all four of these things. Yep. Book gigs and then cancel gigs, right? Yep. No payment on site, shorted payment, you know, uh, uh, you know, communication about future gigs, right? I mean, four pretty good weirdnesses. Yeah. And then you add a little bit of indignancy in an email on the fifth. This seems to be more pattern than it does to be aberration. All right. So now I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, if you had taken all of those email conversations and done none of them via email and only had them on the phone, do you think it would have gone differently? And I realize I'm asking you to look into a crystal ball that doesn't exist, but. Um, ooh. Um, so we're going to go backwards. So, you know, the, the tone and timbre of the, of the, com of all the emails with me leads me to believe that there's a stylistic thing involved here on that side. Now, sure. if I would have called. But you can never really. No, nope, you can't. Tone. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You can't see eyebrows. You can't right. see, you know, there's a lot of intent that you can't read into an email. Yep. Um, the That's an interesting question. So um, I was gonna the say, first thing I wrote down in my I'm going to say notes. no. I'm going to okay. say, I, you know, the data I have now is like I said, this is a this is a a a pattern, not an aberration. This yeah, is I a, understand. an approach to doing business that has proven itself out, not only with me, but with other people. Have they so, reached out to you since this Facebook post happened? I have not. I have not. D you tagged them in this post, right? I so, did. So th in theory, we could assume they've seen it, but but you haven't shown it to them, so we don't know. But Yeah, and again, this is like not a small mom and pop thing. It's like, right. a, you know, it's it, 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 so there's some staffing at some level. Some man I don't think owners might see this. Maybe. But um, – yeah. Is their social presence updated semi-regularly? I mean, is somebody out there paying attention to their Facebook presence? I'm, my post was not for them. My post was, so I'm no, not. No, really, I know, but I'm just curious. Like I the fact know. that they didn't reach out to you is interesting to me. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I will tell you this. I did have one friend uh, contact me, called me. Yeah, see, their and, last post is from June 26th, so they might not be aware of this. Yeah. But uh, I'll, I will uh, share with this that I had one fellow musician call me about the post. Uh, he didn't want to be on the record. He called me about a post and he said, a friend of his said, hey, Paul Kent is going on about, about this venue that you played at. You should probably touch base with him. So, you know, there's some reach and some, I won't, yeah. I, I won't go so far as to say virality to it. But, you know, I think there are a lot of my musician friends who weighed in on it, liked it. A lot of my uh, music consuming friends who said that's not cool. Um, so, you know, it, like I said, it created more of a little stir in my little world than most other things that I do of that type. Yep. Uh, well, people, and that's on, okay. people on Facebook like controversy. I mean, there's no question about that. So, I, I mean, again, I hoped I hope the way that you, you keep saying controversy. I was I was very deliberate in the way that I wrote this to be, have a uh, have a a meaning for it. Now I, I I, I'm not going to undersell. I'm not going to undersell that people like controversy. And at the first whiff of it, that that's where they would go. But if I think if you read it and I hope, you know, some of our listeners read it, um, you know, was it the absolute right thing to do? It was the absolute right thing to do for me. Right. right? 
it, and that's that's about as far as I'll go is that I felt compelled given the the thread and how it ended up and the actions that led up to it um, that, you know, this is not OK. And right, if so I, like I said, go ahead. I know I have a question for you and I'm going to yeah. I'm going to perhaps take this in another direction because I've got my own dirty laundry going on this week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an extension of the dirty laundry I might have shared a couple of weeks ago. Um, would you play with a musician who played there? Like you've, you've made this post, wow. you've said, Hey, I'm not going to play there. I don't, in, I encourage the rest of you to avoid this place like the plague, but, uh, it, you know, you left it at that. Now you've got, you know, uh, whatever, let's say a, a bass player that, that goes and plays there or a guitar player that goes and plays there. And then they call you and, or you, you know, you yeah. might, you might, they might be on your consideration list for another acoustic gig somewhere else. Does, does this make you question their judgment enough that you're not going to call them out on Facebook about it or anything, right. but would you sort of say, mm, maybe that person's not for my world? Well, um, that's a really heavy question, isn't it? So, yeah. cause I was told that just to, to paint the, to close the picture, I, I was, I was called this week by someone who I've played a lot of gigs with. Uh, this person has a problem with someone else that I also play a lot of gigs with. And I was asked to draw a, a line, a line was drawn in the sand and uh, I made it clear that, I, you know, you do you, but I'm not going to pick one or the other. I have no problem with either one of you and I'm yeah. happy to play gigs with both of you. But yeah. but if you don't want to hire me, that's OK. Like this, like I get it. You have to make your own decisions. And 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 that it was made very clear to me that that was the decision that was going to. be. Yeah. Made. Yeah. So, um, gosh. Um. I would certainly have a conversation with the person yep. and make, and see if they knew what my position was. Uh, if they, if they do, um, that certainly sends a bit of a message to me about, about where the person stands on things. Right. Sure. And, um, uh, you know, it's kind of like that similar question. Like, would you play with the guy who will take any gig at any price and brings the, you know, the whole market down and, you know, you know, or, or gives the services away for free and, you know, all those types of things. And so it, it's a, it's a very similar question to that. I think, um, I guess, uh, I would be careful about drawing any hard lines in the sand. I, you know, I would say if someone saw my post, and they acted some way. There's probably some, uh, uh, you know, that, that's probably not an isolated difference in our in our opinions about things. Sure. So whether that means that we would be good musical partners, you know, collaborators, I would probably think about that. Um, I don't know. You know, like I'm amazed, and again, I've learned all these things over time by why. Like my bandmates are really quick to smell out the house rocker guys to sniff out when it's not a cool situation and be willing to like, we don't need that. Yeah. So, you know, me as the booking guy, I've always been really sensitive and, you know, certainly in my solo stuff, I'm the booking guy, right. Um, right. but I've actually learned, you know, that, that this is kind of like the thing, you know, another conversation would be about, about money. You know, I've had, I've had someone say to me, I don't do it for the money, you know, but, but the dollar value is one practical part of it. But it's all part about the respect of the exchange. You know, like I said, I work hard at my craft um, and I, I value my craft and I respect my craft and I respect others who do it. And I think that part of this is that, you know, the exchange of money is one indication, the, the exchange of respect, the exchange of common courtesy these are all parts of the things that kind of go into your equation about anything in life. I mean, yeah. so, so, you know, I guess the deal is this, I, if someone saw my gig and said, well, that's your problem, not my problem. Uh, that's probably a difference in our approach to life. I don't think I would not friend a person who makes that type of decision, but what I think professionally about that, because that's the same person who likely might, you know, bring, not be great for the business market of music around here. So I, uh, that's a complicated question. I, I don't know if I'm answering it all for you, but I would say it would make me think I would certainly have a conversation to see what page the person is on. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I would, it would go into my mix of thinking for sure. I wouldn't say absolutely yes or absolutely no, sure. but I would definitely want to understand where the person's coming from. Yeah. 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 Cool. 
Yeah, that that so. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating stuff, man. Yeah, I, I mean, it's unfortunate, right? I mean, it's like, it, you know, it's not supposed to be this way. It shouldn't be this way in any endeavor. I'm not just talking about music. I mean, people should be paid on time, right. paid what they're promised, you know, responded to in a professional manner. This is this is life, not just music. We, t- I tend to get a little bit more indignant about, about music because, again, now I'm talking about respect and I'm talking about, you know, something that I place great intrinsic value on. And I, you know, once you sniff out that that intrinsic value is being disrespected. That is a, that's a hot point for me. Per, other people have different lines. I totally get that. Yep. And that's why I'm saying, I don't, I'm not going to speak for anybody else. Other people have different lines for me. My meters were going off. They were going off. And then the last email, you know, accusing me of wanting to be paid for something I hadn't done that pushed it over the line. And you know, that, that, that got me to the place where I had to come up with this measured you had to response. Say something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And measured response is the right, description i i would i would use those terms yeah well you know and again this is another for any musician uh, musicians are artists and artists are often temperamental sensitive people anything in life your your gut reaction if you if you sense your body reacting to something your anger you know welling walk around the block and think about what you're about to do so getting back to your original premise right you know your, your emotional reaction often won't serve you well in business, um, in, in business endeavors. Right. So, you know, consider that and, um, and, uh, and think about measured response is good. You're still a business person when the money is being transacted, it is still a business relationship, no matter how much someone thinks they do it for the art or that type of thing. They're still, it is still a business transaction. What I, what I always like to say when it comes to business and emotions is, you're, because your emotions, like you said, you know, that gut feeling can be the thing that makes or breaks your career many times over, right? In anything, because you know when something's not right. The way I like to think about it, though, is when it comes to business, especially, the only person that should be hearing about my emotions is me, right? You don't need to hear me blather at you because I'm, you know, you don't need to he- hear my anger. You might hear a decision I made as a result of being upset about something, but I'm not going to share with you, you know, I'm not going to try and communicate that anger and, and transfer that anger to you, sure. uh, but I'm going to listen to it and then I'm going to make my decision and then I go forward. But it, that, that's kind of how I always think about it is, you know, it, it's OK for me to hear. It's not OK for me to share it, yeah. in business because nobody need nobody wants that. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, man. All right. Well, good. I, um, I, I like I said, I think on this one, your uh, your social capital account is at least equal to what it was. before. <laughs> well, because because there were so many people that came out and not just people that supported you. I mean, you, you're going to have your fans who say, oh, you know, it, we're behind Paul. Screw those people. But it's the fact that, you know, somebody that comes in that maybe isn't quite d- doesn't think quite along those lines. But comes in and reads the post and says, oh, wow, you know, this guy outed this this club and now four other musicians, five other musicians have have said the same thing. Whoa, that's a problem. It's a good thing. This guy said something. Right. Yeah. And that's, you know, if everybody was saying, dude, I played there last night. They were awesome. They overpaid me. It was great. You know, yeah. like that would change the interpretation of it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But you found you sm- you you thought you sniffed out a rat and uh, it turns out you did. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, that's all I got for today, Paul. You got anything else? No, I'm exhausted right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. All right. Well, then we will see you folks next week. Visit us at giggabpodcast.com. Go to slash Facebook there to come and uh, chat about things in our Facebook group. Paul, even when you're on stage at a place you might never play again, what do you make sure you're doing? Always. Walk the walk and be performing. <laughs>